internal schema at the internal level so at the internal level what exactly it is doing so it is describing the physical storage structure so we have two different uh, data independence that's going to be a logical data independence and physical data independence. internal schema will give me the information so where exactly i have stored that data in the database Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on the data models. My dear students, in today's session, I will be discussing one of the important topic which will come for your exam for sure. So what is that we are discussing today? So let's check that. So guys, in today's topic, I will be discussing two important topics. That's going to be the three schema architecture. So guys, we have three different levels of schema architecture. I will be discussing that along with that, what exactly data independence. So I will also discuss about the data independence with all of you. So let's understand without wasting much of your time. So before I start explaining, I would like to show this diagram for all of you. So when it comes to this concept, so this question, will come for seven to eight marks. I want all of you to please make a note of it. So you can expect this topic for seven to eight marks. So this is going to be very, very important. So before I start explaining the concept, let me explain this diagram. Whenever you're writing even in the exam, so first you need to write this diagram neatly. Sir, why should we write the diagram very neatly? So because the evaluators will observe the stride uh, their concentration will go to the diagram. Suppose if you have done the mistake in the diagram, then it is an indirect you know, message that you are trying to convey to the evaluator that you don't know the concept. So first of all, you need to understand the diagram properly. So you should not make any mistakes in the diagram. So that's what the first thing that we need to understand. Let's try and understand this diagram. So what is that I have? So guys, let me start from the bottom, okay? So what is this? Whenever I'm using this kind of symbol, so you need to understand that I'm using the database. So this symbol is used to represent the database. So I have various database here where I will be storing the data. So I have multiple sources, okay? So where I will be storing the data, that is what you need to observe. So I have the schema called internal schema. Observe here, I have the schema called internal schema. So that's the first thing that you need to understand. Internal schema is connected to the different databases, multiple sources. That is what you need to understand. So this is the first part of the diagram that you have understood. What is the first part? You have the internal schema. Internal schema is connected to the different data sources or different databases. That is what you need to remember. So fine, above the internal schema, so you have one more schema that I will call it as a conceptual schema. That I will call it as a conceptual schema. So this is the one more schema. Then after that, I have one more thing. So I will call this as a external level or this I will call it as a external view. Okay, this is the third stage in this diagram that you need to remember. This is number one, this is number two, and this is number three. And the last one, what I have beautiful, handsome boy and girl. So this is what I will call it as a users. This is what I will call it as a users or you can also call it as a end users as I specified. Sure. So fine. So hope you understood the different parts. How many parts? Four. What are the first one? So internal schema. Internal schema is connected to the different data sources. Then above the internal schema, you have conceptual schema and then you have external view. That's what you need to remember here. So fine. You all know that. So external level, external view. And then, so guys, we need something which connects this external level or external uh, view to this conceptual schema that is what we call it as a mapping that is what we call it as a mapping so fine the same way wherever i have used so this kind of things so you should treat that as a mapping so from that say for example if i'm using the arrow mark from this external level to this conceptual so mapping is happening between the external view or the external level 
with the conceptual schema. Suppose if I'm using it here, mapping is happening between the conceptual schema and the internal schema is what you need to understand. So fine. So you have got the basic idea about this diagram now. So let me explain the concept clearly now. Listen to me carefully. Let's start with the first one. Internal schema. So what is this internal schema? I'm speaking with respect to this part one. Okay, I'm speaking with respect to the part one. So guys, when it comes to the internal schema, observe carefully, internal schema at the internal level. So at the internal level, what exactly it is doing? So it is describing the physical storage structure. It is describing what physical storage structure. So guys, this internal schema is explaining me how exactly the data is stored here. Physically, how I have stored. So that information, I will get it in the internal schema. So that is the first point that you should remember. So fine, I have understood that. And what next? Access path. What is the meaning of access path? This internal schema will also tell me or gives me the information about the access path. If I have stored the data and if I know the structure of it, I should know where exactly I have to access it. So how should I access it? That access path to that particular data will be given by the internal schema. So that is what you need to remember. So fine, I understood that access path also. So that is what they call it as a indexes. You all know that. Now in your book, you have index. By checking the page number directly, you will go to that particular topic, right? So that is what the index I will call it as. Same way, internal schema will give me the information. So where exactly I have stored that data in the database. So fine. So after that, so please remember, typically uses a physical data model. Typically uses the physical data model, which we have already discussed. The categories of data model, do you remember? Same thing, okay? That is what we call it the internal schema. So do you have any doubts with respect to this internal schema? No. So you have the information physically, how the data is stored here and how do I access that? So that is what the information that you have in the internal schema. So fine, this is done. Then what do I have next level? So let's check what is the next level that I have. Next level is conceptual schema. Observe here, I'll show you. So this is what I will call it as a conceptual schema. What do I have in this? What is the use of this conceptual schema? Let's understand. Conceptual schema at the conceptual level to describe the structure and the constraint for the whole database. Observe here, what is that I have? Structure and constraints. Constraints is one of the important thing that you need to remember when it comes to the conceptual schema. So con constraint in the sense what? Do you all uh, watched my previous video in that I have discussed about the different states, valid state. What is the meaning of valid state? If you are having a data, so that if that data is satisfying the structure and some set of rules, if it is obeying for that, then I will call it as a valid state. Now, you need to remember here one thing. So constraint in the sense what? Whenever I'm storing any data to the database, I will set some rules. I will set some rules. So that rules, what is that I have set? Say for example, I has, as I told you, age should be greater than 18. If only the data will be stored in the database, if you are entering anything less than 18 or so anything, any other value, okay? So then it will not take. So that is a constraint here. That is what I have given here. That is what you need to remember. In the same way, what kind of constraint that you have for the database, that information I will get to know in the conceptual schema. That's what you need to remember. So fine. Then after that, so it uses the conceptual or implementational data model, the category two, what we have studied, category three, okay? What we have studied in the previous session, okay? So same thing that you will be able to understand same thing that we are using it here and the last one what we have is all about the external schemas what exactly that i have with respect to the external schema remember so guys 
when it comes to the external schemas at the external level it describes the various user views when it comes to the external views we have different types of views why do we have different types of views we have different types of users we have admin we have end user we have developers we have uh, no we have designers so each user will have their own views so that will be decided or the described in this schema that's what you need to remember this is the brief discussion with respect to the different schemas that we have okay so this is going to be one of the important question so please go back and check all right so the next topic that we have is all about data independence it's very simple okay so we have two different uh, data independence that's going to be a logical data independence and physical data independence so guys what happens with the logical data independence and physical data independence so let's try and understand this is very very interesting before that let me give you an example uh imagine we have a three storage building okay so if i do any modifications to the ground floor that should not affect the first floor imagine i'm demolishing the first floor okay so that should not affect the second floor imagine i'm demolishing the second floor that should not affect the third floor so that is if that is the case then i will call that as a independence let's check this hope you will understand this concept very easily the capacity to change the conceptual schema so that's what you need to remember i will also call the conceptual schema as a logical level okay i will also call the conceptual schema observe here this i will also call it as a logical level okay so that's what you need to remember so the capacity to change the conceptual schema without having to change the external schema and their associated programs what is that they are trying to so observe in this diagram let me just uh, erase everything for all of you so guys if i want to do any modifications to this without changing or without affecting this view okay if i am able to do it then i will call that as a logical data independence that's what you need to remember in the same way guys observe i have the next topic physical data independence i think all of you will be able to tell me what is that then so guys so the capacity to change the internal schema without changing the next level so observe here okay so if i am changing anything here okay if the capacity if i have the capacity to change anything here without affecting or changing anything in the conceptual schema then i will call that as a physical data independence why are you calling it as a physical uh, data independence sir? because i will also call this as a physical level so this internal schema i will also call it as a physical level this conceptual schema i will also call it as a logical level that's what that's why we call it as a logical level data independence physical level data independence it's very simple right so guys by now i've come to an end of this topic so happy learning so watch my next session i have something interesting for all of you thank you everybody keep watching and sharing your videos thank you very much